Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Sheldon and this is Behind the Enthusiast. Today we are going to be discussing some of those upcoming models, changes, everything that Harley Davidson has planned for the release on January 24th. So this video, basically it's going to be smack dab in the middle-ish of all of those carryover models that I will be discussing over the course of this month leading up to the 24th. I think we only have about three, four days approximately by the time this video is released before the 24th has that big reveal. So I'm trying to time this so you guys get enough time to kind of stew over some of the ideas that we're going to be discussing and also dissecting that teaser video just a little bit and even a photo from the Harley Davidson website itself. Now, Obviously, I have some predictions, I have some opinions, and I also have some wishful thinking as well. So let's start from what we know based on the website, right? We have the Fat Bob that is missing. This is the bike that I have been trying to bite my tongue on throughout all of the carryover model videos simply because this is my favorite bike. I don't want to see this bike disappear. However, I think there's going to be basically three options. First option, obviously, the bike goes bye-bye. Now, I find it hard to believe that this bike is just going to be pulled from the lineup. However, I don't know what the sales are like on this bike globally. So, if the bike goes, that's unfortunate for me. However... Even though I would love to see this bike continue to be in the lineup, I'm probably never going to buy one brand new. I just can't afford to. So for me, technically, I'm still going to be looking at a used one. I'm probably going to be looking at a 107, so this doesn't directly affect me. However, for those of you who are thinking about buying one, well, 2023 might actually be the last year for you guys to be able to get one of these. So you might have to uh, go find some... Uh, NOS, new old stock, in the dealerships floating around the country, depending on where you live. Now, obviously, that is worst case scenario. I'm crossing my fingers that that doesn't happen. Option number two, which basically this is stemming from watching a bunch of other videos online, other content creators, people discussing the ideas, is... A 117. Now, I suppose this does make sense because obviously we've got the ST lineup. We've got this, you know, this muscle bike, which, you know, maybe it should get the 117 treatment just like the breakout as well, right? And perhaps a bigger gas tank as well. Although I'm not convinced that they would up the size of the gas tank. However, a 117 does make a decent amount of sense now on the well i guess the flip side of that third option which i i guess i'm jokingly saying this but I, at the same time i'm not because i think this is probably a model that i would i don't know take a loan out for i suppose and that is a cvo fat bob now Obviously, some people think I'm crazy for thinking that they would do this. However, if the bike is not on the website, maybe, just maybe, they're doing a CVO Fat Bob this year and not a standard Fat Bob. I know. Wishful thinking. Like I said, there's an assortment of ideas in this video. So, Fat Bob, we have three options. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen there, but... It would disappoint me to see my favorite model deleted from the lineup completely. However, it would excite me in both cases if we see a 117 or a CVO Fat Bob with a 117. Yeah, that does make sense. Actually, yeah. I'm going to say, Harley, don't disappoint me. That's all I have to say on that one. Now, obviously, that one, I'm a little bit torn. However... There is the possibility with the Willie G celebrations going on that this is my prediction. Now, this is just a crazy idea that I have. You may agree with it or you may not. 
but I have a feeling that they're gonna be doing something with the fat boy because I'm pretty sure Willie G helped with the design on this one, if I'm not mistaken. I think fat boy, hear me out, hear me out. Fat boy, Willie G edition. So gonna have an all chrome version, fat boy with the Willie G collection. So foot pegs, shifter pegs, um, actually not foot pegs, but floorboards. You would have the mirrors, anything Willie G from the PNA collection that you can possibly put on the bike, they're gonna do it. They're gonna do both chrome and black. Limited numbers, maybe a thousand each, maybe. And they'll be numbered. Yeah, sounds about right. So that is another crazy idea that I'm thinking, you know, maybe they might do that just because of the Willie G celebration. So Fat Bob, it's destiny unknown. Fat Boy, potentially uh, a numbered bike. They might even do a really nice livery on the bike. Maybe a Willie G inspired livery, I don't know. But I, I have a feeling they're gonna do something with the Fat Boy. They just, to me, it makes no sense for them not to. And so those two models, Obviously makes sense. However, here's the thing that we need to discuss, and that is what we've been teased. Now, in this short video, I'm actually gonna watch it here with you guys right now. You will notice that they're not teasing a whole lot. They are doing some close-ups. They are doing some far away shots as well. Kind of teasing the body lines, the colors, the finish of the exhaust or the mirrors you know all those things the lights as well so when we actually go in and start pausing the video and kind of dissecting what they're teasing here we can see that the road glide and the street glide on the website are not there so it only makes sense for us to make the assumption that the base model, the special, and quite possibly the ST models are all going to get major changes. Now, does it make sense for Harley to switch over the saddlebags and the fairings over to the base models and then just leave the motors the way they are? Hmm, I don't know. I'm not entirely convinced that they would do that. Someone else on the internet was saying that they would do a standard, you know, road glide or street glide, everything the way that it is normally. And then for the specials, they would put the fairing and the saddlebags and everything else on it and basically allow you to choose which style you want more. And I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense either to me because you either do all of them or none of them. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do half and half because CVOs are always a year ahead. So I know it was a little bit of a late release. However, CVO Street Glide and CVO Road Glide were out. We saw what they were. Now, this year, we are either going to see some components transitioned over, some, but nothing major. That's just my thoughts on that because I think I think the CVO should have at least one more run before we see a lot of the components on that model get transferred over to the other models. Now, I'm thinking if I'm wrong and the CVO components are switched over to the base models, you know, the, the road glide and the specials and of the street glide, what exactly are they going to do on the ST models, right? You have 114s, well, you have 107s, 114s, and 117s. And then, of course, you have the CVO with the 121. So you've really got to be careful of what you're actually moving over. Now, obviously, we have saddlebags, the taillights, the fairing, the lighting the VVT, 
you know, all these different components that are completely new for the CVO. So what exactly do you hand pick to put on the other models, right? And this is where it becomes a little bit tricky for people to predict what Harley's gonna do. I suppose if they were just going to do the advanced features of the CVO one year ahead only, and then this year switch over, the engine size has to be that 121. Everything else still has to be a 107, 114, 117. Maybe, just maybe, they're going to start to phase out the 107s, which uh, I find that hard to believe. I think that's a little bit too early, simply because the Softail standard is still using a 107. So I think we probably got, I don't know, two or three years minimum before we see the 107 get phased out in the touring models. However, component wise, you know, the body changes and everything else, I don't think that it's impossible or not plausible uh, to see those changes actually get made. However, there are just so many combinations, so many combinations. And this is, this is the problem. <laughs> yeah, this is the main problem that I have with making a prediction video this year, because there is literally no teasing whatsoever from spoilers, right? This is strictly Harley controlling exactly what comes out. They want a little teaser video to come out, which we just watched. That's all we get. So literally there is going to be so much speculation and honestly guys, full transparency, working at a dealership doesn't mean that I know anything more than what is on the website. So you guys watch that video. I watched it. That is the same information that you have, that I have, that everyone has, except for someone working in the factory, of course. Those are the only people who are going to know exactly what is coming out. And considering how much of a shit show there was previous years, I'm pretty sure those people who were spoiling the fun probably got fired. So, now, obviously I can do my predictions, no problem whatsoever. However, I hope that I'm right about something. <laughs> But I also love being proved wrong because that means that even if I am wrong, hopefully my idea was a little bit interesting or a little bit crazy. And so that is the whole point of this video. Fat Bob, we've covered. Fat Boy, we've covered. CVOs, I mean, based on that video, I mean, the one photo, to be completely honest, makes it look like the orange CBO is still going to be offered, but hmm, I'm not too sure. They're, they're trying, they're trying to trick us. And I know that for a fact. So that other, that other still photo that I will show you guys, the bike looks white. Now, I don't know if it's actually going to be white. Maybe it's just uh, a bright silver and maybe the, the natural light is just causing it to actually look white in the video. But I don't know. I honestly don't. This year, this prediction video is so difficult to put together for you guys. And I'm sure you probably feel like I'm rambling. So let's talk about something else that is really, really well, a true teaser. And that is the still photo on the main website. So harleydavidson.com, you go to the website and you'll see this photo staring right at you of three bikes, not two, three. Obviously we've got the road glide and the street glide, which implies the CVO models. However, what is the bike in the back? It's right in the middle. And I've been looking at it. I've been studying the photo. It kind of looks like a Pan Am. However, if you're looking at the rider's 
shoulder line and everything else, it doesn't really look like there's a windshield there. So, we can either assume that this is a Pan America, which has some changes to it, or a CVO Pan America. Yes, CVO Pan Am. However, this it makes no sense at all. I saw the photo and I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, CVO Street Glide, CVO Road Glide, and a CVO Pan Am. I, I don't understand how this is possible because in order for it to be a CVO going by, you know, what's normally gonna happen throughout the years, you know, you look at the track record and you see the CVOs have much larger displacement engines. How do you do that with the RevMax? There, well, I shouldn't say that there isn't a larger size motor because there could be, but at the moment there isn't. So what is Harley gonna be doing? What do they have up their sleeve? Are they going to surprise us like big time and pull out, I don't know, a, a 1300 or a 1450 or something super crazy RevMax, you know, blown out motor where, where you get this CVO Pan Am? I don't know. I, I just, I find it hard to believe. And when I look at those body lines, I also see a little bit of a scar square at the bottom which to me could be saddlebags and i don't mean pan am saddlebags they're too low so there is a possibility that this is a bike maybe a soft tail with saddlebags however i think that's a little bit of a reach just a little bit so, Harley, good job. I'm going to say checkmate on me. You've defeated me. I have really failed to deliver in my predictions this year because it is so, so difficult to really figure it out. And I love it, to be completely honest. I love it. I love the fact that it is difficult to predict what Harley Davidson is going to be doing because that is half the fun, to be completely honest. I mean, working at a dealership, if, if I knew literally everything that was coming out and I had to bite my tongue and not be able to make these fun videos where I can just brainstorm and think, well, maybe they're going to do that or, or maybe, maybe they'll do that or whatever. I mean, I love that because when I'm challenged, when I'm given little information as like a, a riddle or a puzzle. I got to figure it out. I actually thoroughly enjoy it. So as defeated as I feel right now, I feel great because there's no spoilers. This is truly going to be one heck of a surprise. It's basically going to be a surprise birthday party. I know it's coming up, but I have no idea what the itinerary is, right? I have no idea what the balloons are going to look like. I have no idea whatsoever. And that's pretty awesome. Although, because the Fat Bob is not listed on the website, there, there is that uh, possibility of letdown. And so I'm not going to worry too much about that because I am still holding out hope that we will see a 117 or a CVO Fat Bob with a 117. So I'm really hoping that they do a CVO just because I think they they have made a CVO Fat Bob once, as far as I know, and that is it. It was uh, quite a while ago. And so it would be kind of cool for them to come out with one of those. And if this is their demise, you know, the, the, of the Fat Bobs, then uh, Harley, please come out with a new model. Please come out with something that is going to excite me again because, I mean, out of all the bikes that I've ridden, Sports Duress is super, super crazy, but it's a 1250, way too much bike, way too much on insurance. And 
a Pan Am 975. Now that, that would be possible. And well, if the three bikes are a Road Glide, Street Glide, and Pan Am, perhaps on the off chance that is a 975 Pan Am, it begs the question what they did to reduce the weight, right? I mean, let's be honest, the 1250 putting a 975 motor in it from the Knights to her and just calling it a day is, you just can't do it. You have to trim some of the fat off. You have to go with a smaller gas tank or no windshield, lighter wheels, lighter exhaust. Take off all the extras, the engine guard, the center stand, you know, all these different things you're going to have to strip down and maybe they did it. Maybe Harley figured out how to make a 975 Pan Am and make it relatively light in comparison to a 1250. Now, that is some food for thought as well. However, I'm still kind of holding out hope for a Bronx. Yes, I know, I know, I've been talking about this thing for well, probably a couple of years now, at least, in my videos, and I'm not letting it go. I'm just not. I'm not going to let it go. The Bronx needs to come out. Has to come out. And I will be absolutely blown away, completely blown away, if that model, in between the Street Glide and the Road Glide, is a Bronx. I would, I would have never seen that coming. Just looking at the profile of the bike, it doesn't look like it would be the Bronx. But if it is, holy smokes. 975, I will buy one. I will buy one. Because, well, I said I would buy one. So, I'll have to look at my finances, but, oh, that would be, oof, that would be a spicy bike. Oof. However, I would also want to see what it sounds like because if it sounds like the sports terrace, oof, maybe not. You know what? Let me think on that one. And uh, you know what? I think it's about time that I wrap this video up because this has probably been way too long. You probably, you're probably sitting there falling asleep already. Or you guys are furiously typing in the comment section down below saying, Oh my god, that's so cool. Or no, they'd never do that. Or ooh, actually, that's an interesting one. Or no, they, they might not do that, but they might do this. And so I am expecting a lot of comments from you guys down below as to what your thoughts are on the models that are missing from the website, the teaser video, which is, what, a mere 30 seconds, and, of course, anything that I've mentioned in this video. Uh, reference anything that I've been talking about down below. Let me know if you guys agree, disagree, you want to add something to it, you want to change something just a little bit. I really want to have a big discussion before the big day because I'm probably only going to give you guys about four days, maybe five days to actually discuss in the comment section down below before January 24th. So I'm kind of pushing it a little bit. So Hopefully I've given you guys enough information or speculation to have a nice discussion down below. And of course, if you guys like this video, make sure to smash the like button so I know that it's working. And last but not least, be sure to subscribe so you guys are informed of all the other carryover model videos coming up after this prediction video. I'm jamming this one kind of in the middle, but not really. And of course, we will have tons of more content coming up in February because I will be a busy man recording, checking out all those new models, studying all the details, basically doing a huge collection for you guys. So this channel is a one-stop shop for all your details about the new models. Make it super easy. We'll have a discussion about the new models, what we like, what we don't like, and uh, maybe we'll all buy new bikes. Maybe. Anyway, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. 
and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.